All right, let's go ahead and begin. Thank you all for joining um, our webinar today. This is going to be an introduction to the survey of health, aging, and retirement in Europe. This is called the uh, SHARE. Uh, and this is uh, put on by the Gateway to Global Aging Data. And myself and uh, Jenny Wilkins will be uh, presenting. I'm going to start with giving you some background information um, about uh, SHARE. And then Jenny is going to walk us through some example analysis of using share um, uh, using uh, with share using Stata. Um, also, this is a webinar, so we encourage you to be interactive. So we'd encourage you to ask questions. Uh, there's a question and answer and a chat. You're welcome to um, answer both of those. Hopefully, Jenny and I will uh, both monitor them um, as we're going through. So let's go ahead and get started. So the Survey of Health, Aging, and Retirement in Europe, it's a cross-national uh, panel study of people aged 50 years and older and their partners living in more than 25 European countries uh, plus Israel. So I think one of the really important differences with SHARE with the other studies, if you're familiar with perhaps the Gateway, is that most other studies um, uh, are only are in one country. And SHARE is, is really kind of a, a multinational effort in itself. Uh, there's a lot of uh, harmonization uh, that happens because exactly the same survey is asked uh, across all of these countries. Um, almost exactly, I should say. There are some uh, few set of kind of country specific variables, but almost in general, uh, they get asked the same uh, core survey, uh, most certainly, um, is conducted in, I think, 30 different languages. There are many countries where there's more than one language used. Um, uh, and, it, and it's a really impressive um, survey in itself. And SHARE was designed to give a broad picture of life after the age of 50, measuring physical and mental health, economic and non-economic activities, income and wealth, transfers of time and money within and outside the household, as well as life satisfaction and well-being. SHARE conducts face-to-face -face interviews using a laptop on which the CAPI instrument is installed. A CAPI is a computer-assisted programming interface. So an interviewer comes to a person's um, a household usually uh, with this tablet or laptop, and they walk them through the interviews. Uh, personal interviews are necessary for SHARE because they make uh, the execution of physical tests possible, which SHARE does at every wave. This is different than, say, a study like the HRS in the United States, which tends to every other wave it will do in person or telephone, uh, but they only have physical measures usually from those in-person interviews. Uh, SHARE did conduct the SHARE Corona survey via telephone as household visits were not possible um, during the height of the <clears throat> COVID pandemic. And, and I'll talk more about that, uh, that study itself. So SHARE's target population is all people aged 50 years and over at the time of sampling who have their regular domicile in uh, the respective SHARE countries. People who are excluded from the baseline or refreshment samples is people are people who are incarcerated, hospitalized or out of the country during the entire survey period, or they're unable to speak the country's languages usually, or have moved to an unknown address. So in uh, wave one of SHARE, all household members born in 1954 or earlier are considered eligible for the interview. Um, and starting in wave two for new countries, one thing that you'll see is that SHARE has added um, more than doubled the number of countries that are included since it started in wave one. Um, uh, there's only one selected respondent per household who has to be born in 1956 or earlier in wave two, 1960 or earlier at wave four, 1962 or earlier at wave five, 1964 or earlier in wave six, 1966 or earlier in wave seven, and 1969 or earlier in wave eight. So what you can see that they're doing is that, of course, because these uh, interviews are roughly two years apart, uh, that they are still trying to capture the population of people aged 50 years and older, uh, but they have to capture people born uh, at later dates uh, to continue to kind of have a sample, uh, which is representative of people inside of these the share countries at 50 years and over. Uh, share also includes um, at all waves uh, partners currently living in the same household, uh, regardless of the partner's age. So if, if there is an age eligible person who's 52 and their partner 
is 44, their partner would also be interviewed because um, Cher, as many of these studies do, understands that there's a lot of um, spousal dynamics that happen that are really important to understand. Um, uh, though one other thing I think is important to highlight is uh, here is that at wave one um, is all household members. So anyone in the household who is older, right? So if the household happened to be maybe comprised of um, three or four people uh, who are all age eligible, they would all be interviewed. But at wave two, uh, there is only one person who's selected. So they did change their sampling strategy from wave one to wave two. Uh, you can see here uh, in this graphic, which is provided uh, uh, on the SHARE website, uh, how countries kind of entered into the SHARE survey over time. That's, that's why I like this graph. And you can also see that although the sampling um, the survey timing generally lines up, it is a little different. If you can look at wave one, uh, the survey in Israel, you know, that it was in um, mostly a different time period than for the other um, studies. You can see some, um, some countries, for instance, Austria in wave one have a very short time frame, whereas you look at France also at wave one, um, they're in the field longer collecting that data. So um, you know, I, the interesting thing I think to think about when, uh, especially when you're using these kind of longitudinal things is you want to see when changes are occurring. Um, and so being in the field longer or shorter um, certainly ha can have an impact on what we're trying to study. Um, one of the I think uh, most interesting things about SHARE is that they had started wave eight in 2018 and they were in, in the field or in 2019. Uh, and then the COVID um, pandemic happened and the lockdown. And so they had to stop uh, kind of halfway through their field work in most countries. And they resumed uh, re-interviews using this uh, telephone interview period, uh, which is kind of an, an amazing opportunity to be able to study because as part of the uh, telephone interview, they re-interviewed those people with a different set of questions they had already interviewed to really understand what had happened you know, directly before the pandemic and then during uh, during the pandemic, which is quite interesting. Uh, you can also see that SHARE has continually added, um, added countries, especially at Wave 7, they added quite a large contingent of um, these last, uh, I think, eight countries here. Um, in addition to the core interview, and core interview here just means kind of one of the regular questions that we ask at repeated intervals. SHARE has also collected drop-off questionnaires, and these can contain country-specific questions. They might also contain questions that uh, they think that people might do a better job of answering without an interviewer present. So maybe there's some interviewer bias. Uh, physical measures, so uh, SHARE measures at, uh, all waves, grip strength, walking speed, blood sample, peak flow. It's a breathing test and a chair stand. Uh, end of life interviews for deceased study participants uh, starting at wave two. Uh, life history questionnaires in 2009 and 2017. Uh, COVID, uh, and a life history questionnaire basically goes through all the time in their life before they enter the survey. So although, you know, people become eligible usually when they're age 50 to enter the survey, uh, we know that lots of life happens before age 50, right? And so there's questions about people's childhood, which are especially important, but also what was their education like? What was their entry into the labor force like? What kind of growth have they had over the labor force? Uh, what's their relationship history? When did they start to have kids? <clears throat> uh, have they had any kind of important uh, kind of periods of ill health or disease earlier in life, which could be quite important to understand? Uh, SHARE also includes, as we mentioned, the COVID-19 interviews. They did two rounds of it. Uh, one was June 2020 through September 2020, and then the second round was June uh, 2021 uh, until August 2021. If you're looking for more general information about SHARE, they have a great uh, data resource profile. That's part of the International Journal of Epidemiology's uh, kind of encyclopedia of data resources. Um, they also, here's their website, which is shareproject.org. We're going to look at their website a little later. And they also maintain a blog, uh, which has some interesting um, information uh, about their blog, I mean, about the SHARE survey. So SHARE is part of the international network of HRS studies around the world. Uh, you can see here the countries that are included. Uh, this includes uh, the United States, um, uh, which was the first country, and then the second one was Mexico, and then England. Uh, then the share countries were added. <clears throat> and it's really uh, been continually growing 
some of the, uh, the latest studies to join are India and Malaysia, uh, Brazil and um, Chile also are collecting data as, uh, as well as some data collected in uh, Costa Rica, cognitive data that's coming up. Uh, SHARE, uh, like many of these studies, has kind of some of the similar characteristics that make it part of this family of studies. So that includes that it's population representative of older adults. So these are kind of nationally representative samples of older adults. It's longitudinal. They're multidisciplinary. So they're not just a survey on um, health or um, economics or labor force, for instance. Um, uh, but they try to like uh, kind of get at the different um, factors that we think really contribute to someone's overall well-being. Uh, they've integrated biomarkers, as we mentioned. Uh, they take blood samples and they do these physical tests. They've coordinated survey instruments. Uh, of course, SHARE itself is a, a huge coordinated survey instrument and in that it's coordinated across all these countries, but it's also coordinated with these other studies. Um, also, it's based, um, I think, on work that's done in HRS and ELSA, and then SHARE itself has served as a model for the Japanese survey. Um, I think the Indian survey, uh, Lassie takes some cues from SHARE also, as well as some other ones. It has um, enhanced economic data, um, and uh, the data is all publicly freely available for anyone in the world who wants to do research with it, uh, which is a key component of these data sets. Uh, the gateway to global Asian data has uh, lots of resources for each of these studies, and I'll highlight some of those for SHARE in particular. Um, and I'll just, uh, to do this, I'm just going to switch over to the gateway website. And so we'll just kind of like walk through uh, what these are. So this is the Gateway to Global Aging Data. This is g2aging.org. Um, if you click on surveys at a glance here, you can then see we have some basic information about all of the studies, but in particular about SHARE here. Um, and if you click on uh, this um, <clears throat> top header, header row there, uh, you can also get to what is called the study overview. And we actually break SHARE out as kind of a study per country. Um, and so there's some really helpful information here about, you know, for instance, let's look, we'll look at Austria since it's the first one. Uh, the age, el uh, age el eligibility, which we've mentioned, the people interviewed per household, which we've mentioned, spousal inclusion, uh, institutional representation, there is no oversampling as part of SHARE. You can also see the core collection interview periods. This chart doesn't yet have way eight, but we'll be adding it. Um, and then another really helpful thing to see is that we actually can see the sample sizes per country. Um, and so, you know, one thing that you can see is that for Austria, that they had an initial sample at wave one that looks like it was around 1500 people. Um, and then it looks like it had dropped down to less than a thousand by wave four, but they had a huge resample at wave four, uh, you know, of one, two, three, of basically 4,000 people. Uh, which even by wave seven, you know, they still have kind of a large portion of that. So if you're thinking about, I think, sample size, I think this is really um, important. We also highlight uh, data linkages. Uh, there are data linkages, especially for shared Germany. Uh, if we go here, uh, you can see that there's a linkage uh, with the German pension system for working history pensions entitlements. These uh, generally are dependent on the country itself. Um, there is, uh, it tells you where to get access both to, in this case, the linked data and the core um, interview data at Share Eric. We'll sh show that. And then it also, uh, we tell you what are the harmonized data sets we produce. And we'll talk more about harmonized data, but basically it's a kind of a user friendly version of the data, particularly designed to be used with other HRS type surveys uh, in conjunction with Share. Um, and it has a lot of, um, uh, kind of benefits for cross-study and longitudinal uh, research in itself. Um, also, if we click back on surveys at a glance, we can also go to the core interview tab here and you can look through the interview itself. So for instance, we could go into Share Wave 8. We can see the modules that make up Share Wave 8. We could go into something like the behavioral uh, risk module. We can see the, these first questions here. For any of these, uh, we could click into it and see, you know, the question is how many cigarettes do you smoke? The range is zero to 120. 
Uh, if we look at the next one, it's have you had at least one alcoholic beverage? Um, and then yes or no. And the other nice thing about this is you can actually search. So if we wanted to search something like uh, well-being, let's say we wanted some general well-being questions, uh, we could use a keyword search and we could search. Um, I think I must have spelled that wrong. Uh, let's see. So look at health. It's a more general word. There we go. All right. So if we look at, uh, we can uh, then filter our results to just share. And then we can look through share uh, through any of these different surveys uh, and see what was asked at those surveys. So at share 2013, you know, what would, how would you describe the health of your mother or father? These are questions about your own health. How would you say your health is? Is it self-reported health? So you, it's a kind of a quick way to get an idea if you're looking for one particular thing in a survey to be able to find it. That's quite nice. Um, under documentation, we also have working paper series. So for instance, if you were interested uh, in something like uh, stress, you could click on this um, stress here and we're gonna get a user guide uh, about stress measures. Um, and one of the nice things about this user guide is that it's gonna go through uh, what are the stress measures, for instance, that were asked as part of SHARE. Um, we can find a table here. So uh, SHARE you know, includes questions about stressful life events, job, uh, stress and strain. Uh, they don't include questions on discrimination the same way other studies do. They do include questions on social strain, unsupportive relationships, loneliness, environmental neighbor. Environment, environmental or neighborhood disorder. And they really go through in a lot of detail in these user guides, um, all of the information uh, that is asked about um, uh, stress in this case. And we have these built for different things. Uh, we also uh, have, if you go into concordance across surveys, we have just kind of a table version of a lot of these. So for instance, if we go into cognition, uh, we could see a lot of cognitive questions ac across study. You can see here's this share column. So share did ask about self-rated memory or memory compared to uh, to two years or the last interview. Uh, they asked about self-rated uh, writing and reading skills, immediate word recall. They used 10 words, delayed word recall. They used 10 words. And really the helpful thing about this is you can see how share lines up with other studies. And this is helpful for cross-national research. So you can see that uh, HRS uh, for most of the years used 10 words also. MHAS, the Mexican study used eight words. ELSA used 10 words. CLOSA, the Korean study used three words. JSTAR, the Japanese study used 10 words. So if you wanted to be able to use, for instance, this cognitive word recall score, uh, you could use this um, and you would know which other studies are comparable with SHARE, which is quite helpful. Uh, we've also built uh, graphs and tables. Uh, we can go in and look at uh, one of these. <clears throat> so this is uh, ever had diabetes. And basically what this is, are, these are population estimates that have already been done using the SHARE data. Um, and in this case, SHARE and all the other studies. And you can um, choose here which countries you want to include. You can see the SHARE ones um, are denoted by being part of SHARE there. Um, and you can set the years of interest, whether you want to look at it over time or at one point like we are now, um, set different um, survey measures. You can also add in different contextual information that you think might be important. If, for instance, add in life expectancy at birth or change the subpopulations or compare different subpopulations. Um, <clears throat> so these are quite helpful because before you get access to the data, you can kind of play around with it a little bit, play around with the data and see what's in there. Um, we also have a policy explorer. This is kind of our newest feature. And actually it is really just now comprising um, share countries. Uh, so if you're interested in share, this is a great resource. Uh, and what this policy explorer tries to do is it tries to capture at a single point in time, what is the policy environment? In this case, it was looking just at pension policies. We're going to be building these also for long-term care, uh, education, and COVID policies. Um, uh, but you can kind of see at a certain point of time, what was the policy environment under which that person was operating? Uh, pension policies especially are interesting because, you know, I think we, we know that people are kind of responding to the built-in incentives around pension policy. And so understanding what those policies are 
are quite important. Uh, so for instance, we could look at, uh, we're looking here at Austria over this time range, uh, and we can see that there's, they've had different policies. Uh, there's a policy change at 1996, 1999, 2003, and 2005 um, in Austria. And you can kind of get a sense of what is that policy change and how might it affect people's different behavior. So it's a really nice policy test. Um, and the last thing that I'll highlight on the on the gateway is we've got publications. Um, so if you wanted to, for instance, uh, let's just we'll, uh, let's say we just wanted to say we want surveys or studies that are related to share. So this is an index of publications that have already been put out. And we can say on the topic of cognition, let's say we're interested in cognition. And so you're going to get a list here of different studies that are are re that are conducted using share for that topic. And this can be really helpful for getting started on your research because you want to see exactly what other people have done. Um, so for any of these, you can kind of um, <clears throat> get a direct link or a link via Google Scholar um, uh, and see the abstract information of what was asked in this study. Uh, and we're going to talk more about harmonized data in co-books. So harmonized data, I mentioned those briefly, but I'll explain more here. They're created to provide research-ready variables which are comparable between HRS uh, international family of studies. Um, variables are defined as similarly as possible across all waves and studies. So for instance, uh, if, we, if we make a variable that captures uh, whether someone works at wave one of SHARE, we're going to try to make sure that that variable for all waves of share is exactly comparable for waves one through eight. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to try to make sure that that variable of saying whether this person works is also comparable across different studies so that you could use that variable uh, if you wanted to use um, share data in conjunction with HRS and MHAS data, the US and the Mexican study together. Each data set combines all available waves from each study each individual is one record. All variables uh, use intuitive variable names. So for instance, the variable name R1BMI is whether the respondents is, is the respondents BMI as measured at wave one. So you can see they try to be kind of intuitive. We also include study specific variable names <clears throat> to indicate significant interstudy differences. For example, R2 uh, LBRF underscore S, that underscore S is what we consider is the like the study specific part of the variable name. That means it's specific to share. It's the respondent's labor force status at wave two of share and share uses a different response scale for labor force status. So although it might capture the same information that you would find in another harmonized data set uh, for a variable called uh, R, R wave number LBRF, uh, that underscore S lets you know that there's something different about this one. It'll capture something similar because you know that's the base of the variable name, but they're not comparable in the same way that you could just kind of like line them up and do some analysis with them. We've also built spouse versions of most variables. The spouse versions are named S like S2 work. That's whether the respondent spouse is currently working at wave two. Uh, that's quite helpful um, if you want to look at kind of family or spousal effects. And variables have been built to account for any survey skip pattern. Uh, so let's look at just like kind of a brief example of a simple harmonization. Uh, so if we wanted to make a variable uh, called uh, uh, capturing whether the respondent has ever smoked. So we'll call that R1 smoke ev because it's going to be at wave one. Uh, we're going to use consistent codes across all harmonized variables. So in the harmonized share and all the other harmonized data sets, um, a no will be coded as a zero, a yes will be coded as a one. So in share, the questions about smoking begin this way. The first question is, have you ever smoked cigarettes, cigars, cigarillos, or a pipe for a period of at least one year? Yes or no. A yes is coded as a one, a no is coded as a five. If you answered yes, then you get asked, do you smoke at the present time? Right? And we want to make a variable that just captures ever smoked. So actually, we can just use that first question. We don't need to go to the second question. On the right is the Brazilian study, uh, and this is called LC. This is the wave one of that. And so this is how they ask about smoking. Instead of asking first about ever smoking, they first ask, do you currently smoke? And you can answer it kind of, there's three an possible answers. Yes, daily, two, 
yes, less than daily or three, no. If you answered three, no, then you get asked, have you ever smoked in the past? And you could answer yes, daily, yes, less than daily or no, never smoked. So to kind of make a comparable variable, although it's quite simple in share, right? In share, all we're, do, all we're doing is kind of recoding the values to zero and one. But in LC, we're accounting for this survey skip pattern. So that what you have as a user using the harmonized share and the harmonized LC together is a comparable variable. Uh, and that does include documentation of these differences. Um, this is a really simple example. They get uh, much, much more complicated, especially with kind of maybe uh, cognitive test scores or psychological scores, uh, income and wealth measures. Um, so they get much more complicated. Uh, but I wanted to kind of give you a simple example. And the idea really in make us making these harmonized data sets is that there's a lot of similar work that, uh, that researchers are doing to use these in conjunction with each other. And so we wanted to remove some of that similar work across the studies and kind of provide, you know, using expert advice, here's the best way to create a comparable variable across these studies. So that's really kind of how those user guides that I mentioned before, how they operate as working papers. Um, and then from those, those are written by experts, we then create these variables uh, that then we make available freely for anyone to use. Um, as I mentioned, all of the harmonized <clears throat> data sets are accompanied by code books. Uh, the code book uh, introduces the harmonization project and study. We talk about some of the things we talked about today, which is survey timing, survey design, sampling framework. We discuss weighting and imputation. Uh, we divide variables into sections based on research domains. And then we detail for each of those variables, descriptive statistics, categorical variable codes, uh, plain text, clear, clear, clearly understood text about how it was constructed, whether there are any important differences across waves in that question, and whether there's any differences compared to the HRS. We use kind of the HRS as our basis for comparison since it was the first study that was started. But so we might, we might say something like, oh, smoking is asked in share this way, where it's asked in HRS this way. And so that might be an important difference to consider if you're using uh, those two data sets together. So currently we have uh, three, uh, three harmonized share data files. That's the harmonized uh, share, kind of the core survey that incorporates the first, second, and the fourth through eighth wave of share. Uh, if you remember the third wave of share is a life history interview, so that was not a core interview. Uh, we also have a harmonized uh, share end of life data that, in that incorporates those questions uh, to kind of a next to kin or a person um, who's familiar with them after the person who has died about the circumstances, uh, both of their death, but of uh, kind of like the immediate time before their death. And that's incorporates, um, those were asked at waves two through eight of SHARE, and that's already been built. And then we have a harmonized uh, SHARE life history. So if you're interested in that life history data, uh, there was a life history survey that, as, that was asked as part of wave three, and then also part of wave seven. Uh, they go through, you know, person's life up from childhood up until the time that they joined the survey. Um, you know, a lot of, I think, some of the most interesting work that's come out of SHARE has been using this life history data and kind of understanding, you know, what are someone's whole kind of life chorus set of events that are leading to leading them to where they are. So this harmonized SHARE life history data is quite um, helpful. Uh, we have lots of comparable harmonized data files uh, that we've built through the gateway. Um, so for the HRS, there's a, a RAND HRS and a harmonized HRS. Those are two different files. The uh, harmonized HRS is a complement to the RAND HRS. Most of your basic variables are going to be included in the RAND HRS. Um, the harmonized HRS uh, includes some variables which aren't included in the RAND HRS and also kind of focuses on cross-study comparability. Uh, I will uh, save you the acronyms here, and I'm just going to mention the countries. I think that might be a more interesting way to go through this list. So uh, we have uh, Mexican data, uh, data for the uh, for England, data for Costa Rica, data for uh, South Korea, data for Japan, um, Ireland, China, um, India, and Malaysia. Uh, you can also see that we are always in the process of updating these. So both the Japanese data, the JSTAR, and the tilde data, the Ireland data, uh, will have new waves that will be added soon as they've been incorporated. 
Uh, we've built harmonized end of life data files that would be comparable to the harmonized share end of life data file for uh, HRS, MHAS, ELSA, CLOSA, JSTAR, and Charles. These are also being updated. Uh, and we have built some um, comparable life history data files. Uh, CLOSA, uh, the Korean study, asked a job history survey. So those job history questions are comparable with the questions that were asked inside of SHARE about job history. ELSA has a very comparable life history uh, to SHARE. And then uh, Charles also has a uh, life history, um, uh, which is um, <clears throat> uh, comparable to SHARE in many, the SHARE life history in many aspects. Uh, both the uh, CLOSA and the Charles Life History are not yet released, but they'll be released uh, shortly by the end of this year, we would expect. Um, so how do you obtain harmonized data? So harmonized data files are either distributed through the gateway or by the originating study. Um, in some cases, the data files are created by users based on the code provided on the gateway. And this is, uh, this is what is true for SHARE. So I'm going to switch back to the gateway. Uh, to show you briefly this. Ginny is going to show you also a little bit more about this. So if you're interested in downloading any of these, you can go through our downloads tab. Uh, you can see that we have downloads page. You can see we have tabs for the core interview data, end of life data, life history data, also harmonized cognitive assessments, uh, which uh, Share is planning. I think it might be doing currently at the moment, but that data is not yet available. Uh, for the core interview for Share. If we go to download harmonized data set, it's going to take you to the harmonized uh, share data code. Um, you can also download the code book here right below this. But if we click on this harmonized share data code, this is one you're going to have to create on your own. We have recorded kind of a short uh, YouTube video about how do you do this, because um, I know that it does trip up some users. Uh, basically, the first thing you're going to do uh, is, is you're going to want to download, you can see these steps here, you want to download the share data on your own. Uh, so if we follow this link here, this is the uh, share data page, uh, and this is on the um, data access page. And if you scroll down, there's this share data access to download for registered users. So the first step is that you need to register for share. So you have to register for that separately from the gateway. You have to register for both. Uh, and then once you're in here <clears throat> for share, you can then uh, sign in. And I've already uh, signed in here. Let's see. There we go. So we can see here where I've signed in. And then you can see uh, here are all the files that you can download. Um, you can see that Share divides their files by waves. They also have some longitudinal uh, weights or all waves uh, cover screen release. And we've outlined, if we jump back to the gateway, we've outlined what you want to download. So you want to download the 8.0 release for waves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, the longitudinal weights release for Stata, and the all waves cover screen release for Stata. So once you've downloaded those, you then want to download the harmonized uh, shares data creation code. So we can download that. And then what this is, is this going to, is this is a Stata code. Um, oh, we can look at that briefly here. So you can see this Stata code here. Um, and basically this is a super long code, right? This is, you know, uh, almost 70,000 lines of code. But what this does is this creates the harmonized share. So you only have to run this once in Stata. It does take Stata to be able to run this once. Um, once it's created in Stata, I know that not everyone uses Stata. Once you've created it in Stata, you could then transport it or import it um, into R or SAS or SPSS, whatever is the language you prefer to analyze data in. Uh, but you just need to have a friend or a colleague or some resource to be able to run Stata once. Uh, and it doesn't require any more uh, on your end besides just saying where you stored each of these data sets. And then here is where you store the output data set. Um, and that's how you create the harmonized share. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ginny. And I think Ginny is going to walk us, uh, tell us a little bit more about creating the harmonized share exactly. Uh, just to make sure that it's, I, I don't want people to get tripped up on it. Uh, and then she's going to take us through some analysis. Hi, everybody. Um, 
All right, so now we're going to go through a quick sample analysis using the Harmonize Share. For this example, we'll use Stata, but Share data is also downloadable in SPSS. And you can use a program like Stat Transfer to use the data in SAS or R. So we'll go ahead and pick a research question that we can use to get some experience using the Harmonize Share. In this webinar, we'll try to determine whether loneliness is associated with fair or poor self-rated health. So Share asks respondents to rate their own health using a scale of excellent, very good, good, fair, and poor. We'll actually create a new variable to look primarily at the more negative fair and poor options. And then Share also asks respondents a series of three questions on loneliness specifically how often they felt left out of things, how often they feel a lack of companionship, and how often they feel isolated from others. So each of these is scored so that a high number indicates more feelings of loneliness. And we've created a summary score that is calculated as the mean of these three questions, which is what we'll be looking at today. Finally, we'll determine whether loneliness is likely to increase or decrease the odds of fair or poor self-rated health. So to get started with our analysis, we first have to create the Harmonize Share data set, as Tristan mentioned, and then we'll identify the variables we need, create an additional variable, apply weights, and start analyzing our outcomes alone, and then seeing how loneliness impacts fair or poor self-rated health. Since Tristan has already shown you where you can download the Harmonize Share's data creation code, code book, and share data, I've just provided the links for you here, and I'll skip ahead to step three of adjusting the data creation code to create the Harmonize Share. So when you download the Harmonize Share data creation code from the gateway, it will look like the picture on the left with double bars on either side of the folder locations, indicating that you'll need to personalize these for your particular computing environment. So this setup assumes that you've downloaded and saved the shared data in a similar fashion to the picture on the top right. Here I have separate folders for the cover screen data, weights, each wave one through eight, and a separate folder to save the data set we create. And these are saved on the desktop in a folder named share. So all you need to do is provide the locations of these folders on your computer on lines 14 through 24, save the changes to the do file, and run it in Stata. Unfortunately, for some of you who use different statistical packages, like Tristan already mentioned, you will need access to a copy of Stata SE or Stata MP in order to create this data set. But once it's created, you can use a program to convert the Stata data set into a different statistical package and never need to use Stata again. So next is searching for relevant variables. As Tristan already mentioned, the Gateway website has multiple ways of doing this, including browsing the survey questionnaires, doing a keyword search of the questionnaires or harmonized variables, doing a subtopic search of the harmonized variables, looking through the concordance tables, and searching the harmonized code books. Since you've already seen examples of that today, we'll move on to identifying the variables we need for our particular research question involving self-rated health and loneliness. We'll focus on the most recently available data, which is SHARE Wave 8 in 2019 and 2020. First, it's always appropriate to include the respondent's ID, which is called Merge ID in SHARE. Then we'll need our self-rated health measure called R8SHLT and our loneliness score called R8LNLYS3. We'll also want to limit our analysis to only a few countries, so we'll need the country variable. And when we run our regressions later on, we'll include age called R8HY and gender called RA gender. Finally, we'll include our indicator for whether they participated in wave eight called INW8 and our individual cross-sectional weight called R8 weight resp. So now we're going to work on creating our data set. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Stata. If you're new to Stata, many of the commands will be similar to those seen in other statistical packages like SAS, SPSS, or R, so it shouldn't be too difficult to follow along. 
I'll open the do file editor inside of Stata where I've already opened our program for today's analysis called Intro Share Webinar September 2022.do. For you to run this program, you'll need to edit the folder location on line nine. Uh, we're also using this command called pause throughout the program, which will stop it at different points so that we can take a look at the output and then continue the program. We can execute or run this do file by clicking on this icon with the arrow on the top right. So when we switch to our output screen, Stata has run to the first pause, and when we're ready to continue, we will type the letter Q and enter, and the program will run until the next pause. I'll bring up the commands on the slides so that it's easier to see, and then we'll switch back to Stata to look at the output. So the first thing we need to do is read in our observations and variables from the harmonized share. Stata works by building a data set in its memory, so we'll employ the command use to bring the variables we identified into Stata memory using the harmonized share version F. We'll also limit our analysis here to one country in each major region of Europe. So we'll use Sweden to represent Northern Europe, Spain to represent Southern, France to represent Western, and Poland to represent Central and Eastern Europe. To do that, we employ the command keep and we list the country identifiers for these four countries. Then we'll perform a tabulation or tab of the country variable if they participated in wave eight to make sure that everything was done correctly. So switching back to Stata, we do this and now we see that we have only four countries in our data set, each with around 2000 to 2500 respondents in wave eight. So now we're ready to look at our variables of interest. First, we'll do a tabulation of R8 SHLT, our self-rated health variable. We see that this is a categorical variable with codes ranging from one excellent to five for poor with approximately 40% rating their health as good. But we're interested in the people who rated their health as fair or poor so we'll create a new variable focusing on these categories. In order to create a new variable, we're going to use the command recode of the existing R8 SHLT variable. And we're going to adjust it so that our new variable takes a value of zero if they rated their health as excellent, very good, or good. And it will take a value of one if they rated their health as fair or poor. Then instead of replacing R8 SHLT, we'll generate a new variable and call it R8 PRHLT for poor health. While we're at it, we'll give our new variable a variable label. We'll define a new value label with zero for no and one for yes, and apply this value label to our variable and check our results. From that tabulation of R8 PRHLT, we can see that about 60% are assigned a zero and about 40% are assigned a one, indicating that they had four fair or poor self-rated health. And we'll also check our loneliness score. So we can do a tab to see the distribution of scores, but because this is a continuous variable, it might be more meaningful to determine the mean and we'll do that for each country using the over option. So from the tab, we can see that we have scores ranging from one to three with nearly 60% with a score of one, meaning they rarely feel lonely and only about one and a half percent with the highest frequency of loneliness. From the mean command, we can see the mean score for each country. It looks lowest in Sweden at around 1.25 and highest in Poland around 1.32. So now we're going to apply our weights. Stata has a built-in command for applying weights for survey data called SVY set, where we can tell Stata how this complex survey is set up. Here we'll set the weight to R8 weight resp and set up the countries as our strata. Once we've set this, we can use another command called SVY describe so we can see how it's set up. 
So once we've done this in Stata, we can see that we have four strata corresponding to our four countries, and we can go ahead and start our weighted analysis. The first thing we'll do is estimate the weighted mean of the fair or poor self-rated health variable we made for each country. In order to apply the weights, we have to start our command with SVY and a colon, which will make Stata remember the information we provided in SVY set. So from here, we see that about 23% of Swedes, roughly age 50 and over, consider themselves to have fair or poor health, while around 45% of Spanish older adults, 33% of French older adults, and 48% of Polish older adults also rate their health as fair or poor. You'll see this command also produces a standard error and 95% confidence interval. So on the right, we can see a graphical representation of our results, which is especially helpful for making the confidence interval stand out. Now, if we wanted to test whether there was a difference between Spain and France, we can do that using the test command. In earlier versions of Stata, the mean command will actually provide subpopulations that make this next step unnecessary, but they made a change for Stata 16, and now we can rerun the mean statement and add the, the COEF legend option. Once we have the names we need, we can use the test command to see if Spain and France have equal values. So you can see that the COEF legend provides the mean and the legend, but removes the standard error and confidence interval data. Then we see our test statement and Stata will perform an adjusted walled test. The probability greater than the F statistic is 0.0010 and so is statistically significant, indicating that Spain and France do not have equal mean levels of fair or poor self-rated health. So next, we'll run a regression using R8 PRHLT as our dependent variable and age, gender, and loneliness as our independent variables for each country. We'll once again use the SVY prefix to remind Stata of our weight and strata information, and we'll add a subpopulation limiting it for each country. If you want to use a subpopulation in an analysis like this, Doing it this way will produce more correct standard errors than using an if statement after the colon. So we'll use the command logistic since this poor health variable is binary, and this will produce odds ratios, whereas a logit would command would produce coefficients. So let's check our results. So just as a reminder, the, with odds ratios, the null is a value of one, positive associations will be greater than one, and negative associations will be smaller than one. What we find from our regression is that in Sweden, age and gender slightly increase the odds of having fair or poor self-rated health, although it's not significant for gender. While loneliness has an odds ratio of 3.97, indicating that more loneliness pretty significantly increases the odds of fair or poor self-rated health. When we look at Spain, we see somewhat similar results for age, although gender is now decreasing the odds insignificantly, and loneliness seems to have an even larger impact with an odds ratio of 5.52. While the results in France are comparable to Spain for age and gender, loneliness has less of an impact on self-reporting fair or poor health, but it is still significant with an odds ratio of 2.26. Finally, the odds ratio for loneliness is pretty similar in Poland at 2.43, with similar results for age and gender. For our last regression, we'll interact loneliness and country, which will allow us to determine whether we're seeing the same pattern across all countries, or if the relationship is more country specific. To do this in Stata, we will remove the subpopulation option from the SVY command and then we'll add a C dot in front of our loneliness variable because it's continuous. And we'll add two hashtags and then country, which will have Stata calculate the main effects for loneliness and country separately 
and for the interaction of both. So when we run this, we find that increasing age has slightly higher odds of reporting fair or poor health and gender has no significant impact. Looking across all countries and controlling for our covariates, we see that higher levels of loneliness are still highly and positively associated with the likelihood of having fair or poor health with an odds ratio around four. Holding all other covariates constant, France and Poland with odds ratios of about 3.6 and 6.2 respectively, have statistically significantly higher odds of reporting fair or poor health than Sweden, which is our baseline, and Spain. Although Spain has an odds ratio in the positive direction, it's not significant. Finally, we're looking at the interaction between countries and loneliness. France and Poland have lower odds of reporting fair or poor health with increasing levels of loneliness compared to Sweden. And Spain is in the opposite direction, but not significant. Overall, it seems like in countries with less overall poor health, Loneliness may have a bigger impact on health. So that concludes our analysis and our introduction to SHARE webinar. We sincerely hope that it was helpful for you. You can learn more about SHARE, the Harmonize SHARE, our other Harmonize SHARE data sets, and the other health and retirement studies at the Gateway to Global Aging Data website at g2aging.org. You can also reach our team using the Gateway Help Desk by emailing help at g2aging.org. The recording, slides, and Stata code used in this webinar will be available on the Gateway documentation page in the next 24 hours or so. You can also find many previous Gateway webinars covering other studies, other types of data, cross-country analysis, and longitudinal analysis. Finally, I would encourage you to visit the Gateway blog, which covers a variety of topics of interest to researchers conducting research on aging populations. Tristan and I will be staying around for a little while to answer questions, but if you're leaving us now, thanks for attending and have a great rest of the day.